precedence in succession. We'll talk about more about how it works and how it functions, but for now we'll just give him some silent time and hopefully do what he can do. And good luck. Enjoy the tune, too. Yeah, if you're uh, an astute viewer, you may have noticed the guards there 
had the armor missing that our two protagonists, Zane and Blank, had uh, right after the sword fight. They were kind of using the, the sword fight of the play as a distraction to sneak their way into the castle. So they basically stole the armor and uh, <laughs> left those poor souls <laughs> To the wrath of their commander. Now that I think about it, it's actually not the, the last time Zidane is going to steal somebody's clothes <laughs> in this run either. So to go up the stairs, you can't run into the Maybe handrail like I was just doing. <laughs> it doesn't work. That's me going up the stairs right there. Yeah, you want to talk about the difference between D-pad and analog uh, sure. oh, Especially yeah. on this version, or with this controller, rather. Yeah, this game... <laughs> So, using official hardware in this game is really weird because, for some reason, the the left analog, I, well, I guess the right, both analog sticks really don't have full 360 degree movement for some reason, so uh, D-pad is very prevalent in this run because anytime you're moving diagonally, you are actually going slower than you should be going. Yeah, the, the plastic around the, around the analog stick actually prevents the stick from moving to its maximum range. So you don't actually get full speed when you're using analog. I would say, I don't know about you guys, but I use D-pad for like 95% of the, the game. There's only a couple of really obscure shaped screens that I would use analog on, and the stairs would be one of those. <laughs> Got Buzz Lightyear flying <laughs> in. So yeah, I guess to, to recap some more, um, when we did originally make our way into the castle with Zidane and Blank, they came across someone dressed in a white mage robe like that, and they realized almost immediately that it's the princess herself, who is doing a much better job at <laughs> escaping than uh, is much better job at escaping than her captors are doing at chasing her. Yesterday, so probably thought it was me and my white mage show for this. What intonation? Some good dialogue here from Ruby. She's got like this southern drawl, inexplicably. <laughs> Where no one else has any, <laughs> any accent at all until this too, I guess. So now we're gonna finally catch up to the princess and she's going to tell us that she's actually trying to run away from the castle. So we're going to have our captive just kind of go along for the ride willingly. And if you can already see like the love romance <laughs> brewing already, <laughs> please kidnap me. Okay. <laughs> That's a heck of a first date. He's like, I would love to kidnap you. And this is Cinna, who we, uh, we met, he was in the gang and we mentioned him earlier. Throughout the entire story, every time he makes an appearance, someone more or less says that he has an ugly face. So the problem you can't really tell because yeah. of the graphics. <laughs> <laughs> He's also probably the most frequently useless character in the speed run. Yeah, he's, the amount, he, he's amazing for the amount of memes that I've seen of him <laughs> photoshopped on John Cena to make, yeah, to make yeah. John Cena. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, his damage, uh, his damage has a ridiculous yeah. range. Like, he can do between, like, 2 and 30 something <laughs> damage at the beginning. Yeah, that, that's actually, I'm not sure if you got a turn but uh, beforehand, but in the King Leo fight, uh, a lot of times Sinna's damage doesn't even do anything, but also not only that, you can't use him to one-shot guards because his damage just sucks, so um, despite the fact that you want to kill off the guards before King Leo, you actually would just opt to attack King Leo with him, because it's just not reliable at all. But the worst is in the Mage Master fight when... Uh... Sin is trying to hit himself and he's like yes. Yes, he, 10 damage to himself. Yeah, he can't he can't even uh, kill himself, let alone enemies. So now we're gonna get our first battle of three with Steiner before he parties up with us. Yeah, so Steiner is hot on our tail. We we pretended that we were stuck in the hole on our way down here to elude him briefly, but he did catch up to us. So now Going into this fight, it's uh, pretty simple. There is some steal opportunities if the runner chooses to do so. Uh, but other than that, we're just going to be doing a few attacks. So you can either do two Zidane attacks or one Zidane attack with two blank attacks. You can actually utilize the HP weight technique here again. So you'll see 
He attacks with Zidane, goes into the sub menu, and then basically he's just looking for when Zidane's ATV resets back down to zero. Once that, you're clear to just do whatever you want, and you know that because Zidane's faster, he will get to attack again. So. Oftentimes, I'll use defend with characters while I'm ATV waiting if I know I'm about to finish the fight, just so that I can hold X and have Zidane's attack a menu queued as quickly as I can. Yeah, sometimes you get yourself in a situation where you're like where... shuffling through characters. Yeah. And then you can miss the opportunity that you had to actually get, get the, the second attack off. Unfortunately, Steiner always goes first on this fight. Yeah. So even though he had a really good ATB, we, there's, it's absolutely impossible to get the attack off. Too much. I hope you enjoyed the animation of Steiner's cool attack because that is the coolest thing you'll yeah. see Steiner do for pretty much the whole run. <laughs> And fortunately for us, we knew Steiner's biggest weakness, which are Oglops. And I believe they were hidden in Blank and Zidane's armor, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see them hopping around when they're in there. Earlier. Which begs a lot of questions that will go unanswered, unfortunately. Yeah. So these two guys holding Marcus are pretty cool. They're the Hero Brothers, and they just kind of flail their arms around, if you watch. Like, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> it's like they don't know which arm to fist bump mm. with, so they just do both. Yeah, so while the play is going on, we're trying to escape from Steiner, and to do so, they are taking the lifts up to the play themselves, so they're going to do a little, need to do a little bit of improv. Fortunately for them, uh, because I Want to Be Your Canary is the play, is the uh, region's most popular play, uh, Garnet herself actually knows all the lines to the play, so uh, she's going to join in. Steiner doesn't know what's going on. Going for another man already. <laughs> and, and Steiner's actually an amazingly good actor here by accident. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's the funny thing is they, they <laughs> he's asking Steiner to marry the princess, and he's thoroughly confused as he knows that this is uh, Princess Garnet, and does not know that this is a play. With that in mind, it leads them to some very unfortunately tragic situations. Oh no, and there goes the princess. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. The acting by Steiner here is so good, just accidentally. It's almost like it's real. So while this is going on, uh, the queen is devastated, because this <laughs> is also her favorite play. She is reveling the fact that she does not know where her, her daughter is. And also, at the flip side, Vivi and Puck have Probably the best seats in the house, which makes you wonder why they're even there, considering part of the play was yeah, they're actually, there. They're standing where our battle was. Yeah, they're yeah. practically on stage when you think about it. They were really impressed. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they're running away from the, the guards, and <laughs> you'll see Vivi's first use of his magic, confirming yes, he is indeed a black mage. And he has pretty bad aim. Yes. <laughs> So, unfortunately for them, Garnet needs to take off her on-the-fire robe, and now everyone knows it's her, including the Queen. So we're going into our next battle with Steiner, uh. and this one's going to be a little bit different in what we choose to do. Um, you can win this fight, but uh, we're going to elect to instead suicide all our characters, except Garnet, which is... Uh, hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah, which, hopefully. Is, which is a mistake that I'm pretty sure every runner has done at yeah. some point. Uh, so, yeah, like, say you... he uh, has... Zidane hit himself, and then you go to yeah, yeah. select Vivi like as soon as Zidane's hitting himself, and then uh, he'll you'll accidentally target Garnet. Yeah, because when you when you go to target your party members, it instantly just goes to the top. So if you try to select someone while you're uh, while someone else is essentially killing themselves, it, the cursor will automatically move down. So you can't get yourself into trouble if you're not careful. Um, there is some ways to kill Steiner that potentially are faster, but most of the time, it's just easier to kill off your characters. And uh, the guards, nor Steiner, will not actually attack Dagger. So once the rest of the party is down, then uh, the fight is, is over. So now they're trying to take off because, as you saw earlier, the theater ship is able to fly. So they're just trying to take off, and the queen is going to try to do everything she can to prevent them from getting away with her daughter. Yeah, naturally. Obviously, their cover is now blown, given the fight that we just had. So. Uh, not only is their cover blown, they know that the princess is with them, so they're going to try to escape, but the queen does not want to let that happen, obviously, so she's readying her harpoons and then has another surprise waiting for us as well. This is actually one of my favorite FMBs in the game. 
the idea of having a, a castle that shoots, I don't know, harpoons <laughs> with chains on them. Like, like they, it's like they know that this is the only time that these weapons would be useful, and they, they were ready for it. And of course, my favorite part of the cutscene is coming up. Yes. Right here. It's actually extra concerning when you think about it, because there really isn't that many airships in this world in the first place. So there's like maybe four or five opportunities to use this. But the ultimate weapon coming now is the bomb. There. Has... Can I get some uh, car bombs <laughs> yeah. out of any of my subs are in, in the depth? Shameless self-promotion. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, b bombs are obviously a recurring enemy in the uh, right. Final Fantasy series, so... Uh... <laughs> I'm excited for all seven of his subs to use <laughs> 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 So yeah, our strategy here is this. Oh, this is actually my favorite part of the run because you don't really do anything, so I just like to play this song. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait for it. Thank you. <laughs> and in case you were wondering, folks, yes, this is indeed the pinnacle of FF9 speedrunning. You find ways to entertain yourself while you're actually speedrunning nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so our, our strategy on that fight is basically just the same as the last one. Um, unlike the last one, however, we do not really have an option to, to try to kill Steiner. Um, the funny thing about that fight is that Steiner is repeatedly being told that there's something behind him, but thinks he's being tricked, so he won't actually look until the end. So the bomb explodes, and the ship is now obviously on its way down, but fortunately for us, they're able to make their way out of the city, but not that far, as it turns out. It also makes you wonder where the chains went, exactly. <laughs> but they did get rid of them all, so without too much damage. So mad I'm gonna snap a fan. Oh. Get on it. Oh, you can see all this mist here. This is actually a uh, causal for why there are so many monsters in this world, which we'll learn about more, more a little bit later on. But the mist is actually a really, really significant part of the story. Yeah, and this, this upcoming... Or actually, oh, wait a bit. I like how they cut this FMV so they can have a dialogue that says, We're gonna crash! Those are all the happy little trees. It's kind of annoying because it would be a nice little yeah. break, early break, except you have to just skip one text box yeah. in the middle. I don't know how anyone survives this. The <laughs> yeah, it looks like it used to be like a nuclear wasteland after, based on the background. Okay, so this part here is an ominous foretelling of the rest of the story. Uh, the queen is essentially sending her jesters after Garnet, but not only to get her back, but because they have some sort of secret project that they need. It's like, we need to try our experiment. Yeah, they have some sort of experiment that... That doesn't sound good. Yeah. For now, it will go unexplained, but suffice to say, it's not good. But for now, the rest of our crew, ship has crashed into this forest known as the Evil Forest. Um, it's okay, it's fine. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. And this is where the RNG really starts to yeah. play a huge factor because we're going to start getting random encounters, which can... Let's just all die. Yeah. They're pretty brutal in this game compared to a lot of games for a number of reasons. Yeah. They made fleeing from battles really, really difficult, and um, the load times for each battle is also quite long. Alright, each encounter is at least 30 seconds. Sometimes it can be up to a minute if a bunch of enemies get a turn. Yeah. So, um, we'll try to keep track of the total number of encounters. Maybe the uh, the crowd can help us keep track of the number. You know, they're introducing us to a new thing they added for FF9 called the Active Time Event, or ETE. Um, and essentially, like, while you're doing things, like, these will pop up throughout the game, and they kind of let you check in on characters in places where you are currently not at, and you can see what's going on around elsewhere. Right, we're going to take our first little save here. Yeah, there's something that are gonna is going to come up uh, throughout the run 
Um, most of the ATEs that we'll see are forced, obviously. Um, but casually speaking, they added a nice, there was kind of a nice way to get a glimpse into what other characters are doing, especially since the party does frequently change throughout the, throughout the game. And even the saves take a long time, because you wait for this new goal to do his little, little thing. He does like a double front flip, give him a break. I don't care where you're going, if someone says someone's going to do a back flip here, you're going to wait. One! So yeah, this, as you can see, is the first screen of the game where we can get encounters. Um, this particular encounter is not the worst that can happen. Uh, we have a fight with a boss at about one hour mark in the run, and we need to keep track of Zidane's experience. We want him to be ideally level four, but level three is also good. Um, so this particular encounter is nice because uh, experience is split by however many party members are in your party at the time of uh, the battle, so Zane actually gets the full benefit of the experience here. So um, It makes this next fight go a little bit faster, yeah. actually. Uh, yeah, because uh, if he's still level one on this fight, then he'll actually, you'll actually get the D-Trans animation, which is also very long. Yeah. Though my only thing that I really am not particularly fond of in this game is its limit break system, which is the trance system. Yeah. Yes, this is where it's introduced right here. Like, if you just watch how long it takes to activate, it's a little bit much. Yeah, it, it's very possible that Square Enix perhaps wanted to nerf the limit breaks in FF8. If you've ever seen a speedrunner that heavily, heavily abuses them because they're essentially spammable if you're at low HP. So in this game, it's essentially the opposite, where you have almost no control of when you get to use your limit breaks. Um, Story-wise, trance is, as Steiner says, induced by emotion, so uh, basically any sort of surge of emotion, in this case today in trying to save Garnet, has given him special powers, so to speak. And I'm sure many people have accidentally used <laughs> title, title flame, flame on this fight yeah. and game over. It's yeah. because... so cool though, when you're like 8 and you play this for the first time and it's like free energy or title flame. Yeah, no. Uh, the, uh, the Mage Master that we got is the one that gives title flame, so you would only accidentally do that if, uh, if you get that weapon. Yeah, you'll notice uh, when he did those two attacks with Zidane, uh, the bar below his health actually was going down every with each attack. Uh, so the reason why level 1 has the D-Trans animation, which Makara alluded to, is because um, he has less bar, essentially, because he's lower level, so when you do your second attack, it expires. So it has to play this animation of you going out of trance, which is basically just as long as the one you get when you get trance. So uh, because of the fact that we're level two, it won't actually run out, and uh, we don't have to watch it since the fight is over. All right, so that first cage actually took the princess and fled, and now we have Vivi, who is now been captured by another one, and we're gonna try to save him as well. This fight, just like the last one, for some reason you can't attack Vivi, but uh, we don't have trance, so we're not going to make any title flame mishaps. But Vivi will actually use attacks on the enemy, even though he's not in our party, which is really nice because he does uh, quite a bit of damage. And as you can see, the the prison cage absorbed HP from uh, from Vivi, so this fight has a bit of a time limit to it because uh, it's keeping track of Vivi's health the entire time. Um, but fortunately for us, it's essentially free, especially with the weapon that we stole at the beginning. Um, so, we do, uh, so we do two attacks each, and then we're going to do a steal in the third round, and hopefully we will get the common steal, yes. which is... is the... Hey! Yeah, okay, that's good. All right. So that fight was about as good as it goes. Of course, since we have 10,000 gil, uh, it's not as big a deal. Uh, yeah, the broadsword is actually not a good item, uh, but that's precisely why we want it. Um, we can use it later to give to a character that temporarily joins and take their better item, so uh, getting the broadsword, which is the most likely option, is the best thing to happen. However, this is FF9, and that is not always the case, so sometimes it is possible to miss, and it is possible to get the rare steel, which is the leather wrist, uh, which is not useful for us. It actually can be detrimental because the leather wrist is what gives Zidane enough stats to be able to crit, and there's certain fights where we really want to monitor our damage, so uh, it has a lot of disadvantages early on. So, so yeah, we've killed that boss, and he shot that, like, fume out after he died, and now all these people that were with us have been infected with seeds of some kind, and so they need to drink this, like, potion, I guess, to, I don't know, get rid of them. <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. And the reason we need the broadsword is because you can't actually remove a weapon. Yeah, yeah. You can remove armor and accessory, but you, uh, if you want to mm-hmm. remove a weapon, you have to equip another weapon. So we want to get a, uh, take the better better sword off of Blink before he leaves us. Yeah, in the world of Gaia, you are allowed to be naked, but you're not allowed to be unarmed. <laughs> so what's going on here? Uh, BB and Steiner have been poisoned by the prison cage, so Zidane is going around giving them the antidote. Uh, at the same time, uh, uh, Leo, King Leo, <laughs> if you will, uh, is the leader of this troop, is telling Zidane that they are giving up on their mission to steal, steal away the princess, but of course Zidane, who is instantly infatuated with her, uh, wants to save her to the demise of his boss. And <laughs> to that end, he is reminiscing about her Listen, already, even though he only met her like 20 minutes ago. Listen, when you get down on one knee and tell a girl you want to kidnap her, that's for life. That's... <laughs> what does it mean when she tells you she wants her you to kidnap her? I think that's called marriage. <laughs> <laughs> We're together forever now. <laughs> Do you have time for a quick donation? Yeah, you can do a few. Okay. Uh, we have five dollars from Rooster78. Good luck to all the runners. It's going to be a long night. <laughs> yes, it is. We have a $25 from Kyle's Little Monster. I've heard this game is easy if you're Lesbell. <laughs> <laughs> Super hyped to watch this. Ro- I got $20. Человек, кто по 500 долларов их надо, как раз еще большим текстом. Это не касается. Я не могу тебе все объяснить, но это не в пользу. Если ты куда-то жертвуешь 500 долларов, просто так. Это не в пользу тебя, как мужчины говорит. Это я так. Хорошо, поправь меня, если это не так. Jay Zinn, who says, here's 